So my, my name is Carl Gantner. I am a dual degree master's student here at MIT, part of MIT Sloan, the business school, and the Aero Astro Department. And I want to talk to you about what we call the node. Uh, it's been worked on for about two years with, at the MIT Star Lab here. So what is Node? Node is a satellite communication system that uses lasers instead of radio frequencies to communicate. Now, Node is a system. It comes in two parts. One first is goes on board the satellite. So most of the images we see of, uh, from the Earth, from space, uh, t are taken by satellites about this size. So it's that when the solar panels are down. These are known as CubeSats, and uh, they're inexpensive to launch. Uh, you can get them up there really fast. However, because of their small size and small power, they have smaller radios. What Node does is fits a greater data rate into this smaller package. So using uh, commercial off-the-shelf hardware, we can create a onboard terminal. It's about the size of two slices of bread back to back that fits on even these small satellites. And that transmits an infrared laser down to our ground station, located down here on the Earth. Now, a traditional radio frequency ground station could be 5 to 10 meters in diameter, and it would be cemented into the ground. It's not going anywhere anymore. Our ground stations are essentially amateur telescopes. And they're lightweight, they're inexpensive, and they're mobile. So we can spread a lot more uh, for the same cost. Now, this whole system is capable of 100 megabits per second, which to put into context is about 20 times what you could get out of the top of the line commercial off the shelf radio that would normally fit in one of these satellites. So the benefits of the system break down to four categories. First is the capacity, as I mentioned. It's 20 times greater than what you could uh, normally get. Second is security. Because we're using wavelengths that are 10,000 times shorter, our beam width is much narrower. And that means that we deliver the signal only where we want it to go. So you're not spreading your signal over a large geographical area. Uh, third is the size, which I've al also mentioned. Compared to an equivalent radio of uh, Node's capability, Node would be half the size, mass, and power, and would have an antenna uh, one-tenth the diameter. And lastly, the financial, because we are outside of the radio frequency spectrum, there's no licenses required, and because of the higher data rate, you can get more value out of your satellite. So let, we'll save uh, jumping into that uh, until a bit later. Right now, I want to talk about why this is really useful. We've been used to seeing images like this, although perhaps we're more used to them like this. We use satellite imagery to navigate our cities, to check the season's crop, and to monitor the global environment. Most of these images are taken by satellites about this size. And these types of satellites are being launched more and more frequently. And that growth is actually jumping up in recent years. But tracking this growth is not just the number of satellites, it's the data they generate in orbit per year. So on the right there, that red line is measured in exabytes generated per year. If you were to use a commercial off-the-shelf radio for one of these satellites, it would take you 350 years to downlink all the data you could generate in just one. The node system can bring that down to about 15 years for reference. So, this isn't the only problem. There's also this. Uh, some of you may recognize this. This is the US uh, radio frequency spectrum allocation chart, just a part of it. As you can see, it's used up, it's accounted for. Uh, satellite communications only has a small fraction of this, and they're having to fight with uh, terrestrial users of RF uh, for this ever decreasing slice of the RF pie. So the problem for Earth observation companies is they have so much data they can't get it down, and that effectively means that they are leaving data on orbit and leaving revenue on orbit. And they're also uh, having to fight for this spectrum. What Node does 
is get you out of that. It increases the data rate. There's no spectrum licensing. It's a secure system. It's a small system that can fit in um, a variety of different size satellites. And uh, most importantly is it can get more value of each satellite down uh, to the ground. So let's go into the uh, financials a little bit more. We think that with this extra data rate, each satellite could become uh, potentially a million dollars more valuable to an Earth observation company per year. And this is all because they can downlink greater amounts every year. And this, not only because our data rate is a lot larger, but our ground stations are smaller. So we can spread them all across a wider uh, area of land for the same cost. Now, uh, the node is not just a project with some interesting CAD drawings, but we are actually uh, going to send node into orbit. We've partnered with a commercial Earth observation company, and we're going to be ready for launch by the end of this year, or the beginning of next year. Um, and we, we're going to uh, demonstrate this. So I'll leave with this last point that we're looking to bring Node outside of MIT and continue to develop it. We think there's a really good uh, value proposition for the Earth observation industry, and we want Node to be a big part of that. Um, so we're looking for investment now, and if you're interested, uh, please come by and visit our poster. My name is Carl Gantner. Thank you very much.